When I started recording music using a home computer, this was the computer I was using. Nowadays, we take recording in the box for granted. It's the way we all operate. Computers using digital audio workstations are the standard method of making music for most people. Whether it's amateurs starting out with one of the entry-level DAWs, right up to professionals working in major recording studios. But in this video and the next, I want to take a step back to have a look at some of the technology that we've employed over the years to get us to where we are today. And I want to start by looking at how things were before Steinberg created VST. Back in the mid 80s in England, if you had a home computer, chances are it was either a Commodore 64 or a Sinclair Spectrum. This was my Sinclair Spectrum from back in the day. The Spectrum was marketed as a one-size-fits-all computer boasting a massive 48K of RAM. You loaded programs into it using a tape recorder and you saved data the same way. This one has been hot-rodded. It has the ZX interface which allowed you to hook up either a microdrive which was Sinclair's version of an external hard drive only the drives themselves were tape based using these small cassettes that had tape loops inside them. They were faster to use than a cassette deck but not much more reliable. You could also buy add-ons, interfaces that plugged into the back, the most popular of which was an interface that allowed you to connect up two joysticks. You could also buy other add-ons and when I bought this from XRI Systems it turned my humble Sinclair Spectrum into a fully fledged MIDI recording computer. Here we go. As you can see on the front it boasted a MIDI in, two MIDI outs and two DIN sync sockets which was how manufacturers such as Roland at the time were connecting up sequencers and drum machines as MIDI was all very newfangled. It came with a comprehensive user manual and was capable of recording eight tracks of polyphonic MIDI. 59 sequences in total to a maximum track length of 250 bars. It was pattern based much like Machina is today. However, although you could record patch change information, continuous controllers weren't supported. Nonetheless, it opened a whole new world of possibilities to me and I began to record MIDI. Shortly afterwards, Atari launched their ST range of home computers. The 520 ST had 520k of memory, over 10 times that of the Sinclair Spectrum and the 1040 ST had a whole megabyte of RAM. You can actually expand this up to 4 meg and when I had an Atari ST that's what I did. The ST when it was launched had a unique feature, built-in MIDI sockets. Legend has it that Joe Tramiel, the owner of Atari, had these included at the behest of his son who wanted a computer he could plug his synthesizers straight into. This feature was immensely attractive to musicians of the day and also to the software companies. Two German software companies were very quickly off the mark. C-Lab launched their creator software which later became Notator and when they became eMagic it evolved into Logic which still remains on the market today as one of the flagship DAWs but now much upgraded and enhanced and in the ownership of Apple. After Apple bought eMagic, support for Windows was almost inevitably going to be dropped and it was a few years ago. The other German company was Steinberg who came to market with Pro 24 which offered 24 tracks of MIDI recording. This later evolved to become Cubase 
and my journey with Cubase started with version Cubase 2.0 on the Atari, later upgrading to Cubase 3.0. However, Cubase at that time was still strictly MIDI only. Audio sync had to be done another way, but that's a topic for the next video. So until then, you take care of yourselves.